Hello, sweet exiles, and welcome to the Mantra of Flames Bone Shadow Juggernaut build guide. To start us off, I want to make clear for what kind of content this build is made and what else can it do. So it is made to farm the absolute fattest maps you can imagine that are juiced up to insanity and it absolutely crushes that. 100% delirious, no problem. And to clear what kind of build it is, it is a melee skill and it uses a strike skill on that. And it is based on ramping damage, which means at the beginning of a fight or on a map, so the first couple seconds, you will hit like an absolute wet noodle, you're a little real trash. But after like 5 seconds of ramping, you transform into a literal unstoppable killing machine and it feels good every time. Now, while we'll have a look at the Bone Shatter skill, I'll let some gameplay footage run over here. And yeah, let's kick this off. So here we have a Divergent Bone Shatter, which is the alternate quality version of the gem. If you have never seen the skill or played with it, I want to briefly explain how it works. So every time you attack, you will gain on a successful hit a trauma stack. This trauma stack has a base duration of 6 seconds and you will gain like 2-4% to 4 depending on the level, uh, more damage per trauma stack. Um, those trauma stacks stack up and each of the stack counts as a separate buff. This powerful buff comes with a severe downside. The line here reads, take 43 physical damage per trauma when you gain trauma. So if you already have a stack of 10 trauma and you gain another, you will be taking 430 flat physical damage. To now take a closer look at the alternate quality version of the gem. So uh, per 20 quality we get a 1% increased attack speed per trauma but take also an additional amount of flat physical damage when you, ta uh, when you gain trauma. So um, th that's not all. We want to juice the quality up as much as we can and for that we will be putting it in a stuff like this with plus two level of socketed support gems and additional quality craft for socketed gems and we also have linked here an enhanced support gem now if you look um, the skill gem has 100 percent uh, total quality which nets us a total of five percent increased attack speed per trauma but we also take an additional 100 flat physical damage per trauma. Um, you may be thinking, why would, you, why would you do that? And it is here where the unique jewel Mantra of Flames comes into play. We will have a look right here. Uh, Mantra of Flame, a perfect roll, says adds 5 to 12 fire damage to attacks per buff on you. And we will be stacking a lot of buffs. Now, if we go over uh, to our ascendancy, we have the notable here, unbreakable. The important part here is 1.5% of physical damage prevented from hits in the past 10 seconds is regenerated as life per second. With all defenses this build has, and you're ramped up, you'll be regenerating in an absolute ridiculous amount of life, like 100k life per second. Uh, same goes for energy shield. We have, we'll, have, we'll be having a, like a little bit, you can see here like I have 700 energy shield over here. And with the, with the keystone and divine shield, this is pretty much true just for a short amount of time of four seconds. You get back to the ramp so we will be gaining a trauma and with each trauma stack increase attack speed so we, we will be attacking faster each time we get trauma than we were before so this ramps up and we'll be attacking faster and faster and faster and we are getting trauma more and more and faster and faster so um you may be wondering is is there is there a cap is it infinite will i will i have like infinite attack speed so no, there is technically or in theory and this character um, right as it stands 
um, can withstand in, the in theory about um, a drama stack of 750. Um, any more and the character will kill, would kill itself in a single hit when it gains trauma. But this is just theory. In reality, the stack is way lower than the character can withstand. And this has to do with how damage and when damage is calculated. Uh, you see, um, all damage in the game is pretty much not like something that happens instantly. But it is seen over a certain amount of time or server ticks. I don't want to get too technical here. Uh, maybe in another video we will see. Um, but this character right now here can withstand a stack of roughly 500 to 550 trauma when everything is lined up. And now let's have a look at the skill gems. So at first we will look at our main setup, which is Divergent Bone Shatter. Here we have linked um, Awakened Fire Penetration, Endurance Charge on Melee Stun, Currently still increased critical damage, enhance and increased duration. The only, in my opinion, mandatory support gems here are enhance and increased duration. We'll be uh, quickly checking um, path of building and see what it says here. If I take off uh, those, uh, those three we will be seeing um, Endurance Charge and Melee Stun gives us 44% more damage since this build right now has 11 Endurance Charges. Awakened Fire Penetration gives 58% more damage. Uh, Awakened Ellie Damage with Attacks um, gives roughly the same as a Crit Damage, while Crit Damage is way cheaper to acquire. But Awakened Ellie Damage with Attacks comes with the benefits that you can run um, Ellie Reflect maps. And for the, for the more budget-oriented version of the build, you can also slot in here um, Fortify instead of taking it from the skill tree or getting it uh, from a large cluster jewel with the uh, Overload Notable. So if we tick um, my current setup here, um, uh, at uh, 200, uh, 200 trauma stacks, um, roughly having like 50 million DPS against a Shaper or Cyrus, a Cyrus level target. And when I go to the notes over here, um, I said earlier I can withstand a stack of roughly 500 trauma. Um, here in the notes, you will feel, you find um, like a lot of stuff I wrote down. And you also co can copy here like um, like certain certain breakpoints um, I deemed uh, nice to know. So I will copy here um, a stack or the added damage for a stack of 500 trauma. Um, I will putting it here in uh, the configurations tab. Uh, set it here. And now that's not the correct damage. You will need to change over here the trauma stack to the stack you put the flat damage in. And I, if I put it to 500 trauma stacks, I'm sitting on um, almost 300 million damage per second versus a Cyrus or Shaper level target. Unfortunately, this is not realistic since um, that high of a stack I only achieved um, while luring a mob to an undying totem and hammering his ass. In reality, the biggest stack I ever achieved was um, versus a Conqueror, uh, versus Drox in a 100% delirious, mega juiced uh, monster life map. On average, um, or in a, in a real scenario, like 100% delirious mapping, or doing like a super endgame boss encounter, I'm sitting at roughly 200 through 300 trauma stacks, which is still more than enough to kick everyone's ass. Well, let's check back in game um, with the next setup, which will be our auras. Uh, right now, I'm using a, a Purity of Elements. The anomalous version just gives like increased aura effect, which is a little bit of extra. Um, uh, all alley res, which the aura gives. 
um, combined with a level 3 Enlighten, a Determination, and Petrified Blood. On top, I'm also using a Divergent Arctic Armor. Um, the Divergent version here gives an additional less physical damage taken. For life reservation, we have a link uh, with Arrogance, uh, Purity of Fire, and Precision. We have a cast with damage taken set up, which we'll be linking with Assassin's Mark and Life Tap. In our chests, uh, we have our like buff and utility set up with Anomalous and Model Call. The Anomalous version gives here fully juiced and then 50% increased cooldown recovery rate for Immortal Call, which is very, very nice. Uh, Enduring Cry, um, a 2023, um, with all quality up, um, gives increased skill effect duration. It is also linked, or both are linked, with increased duration, life tap, and anomalous effic uh, efficacy. Um, efficacy gives even more increased duration. And uh, Leap Slam over here is, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be a six link. But our main goal here is to achieve 100% uptime on Enduring Cry and the very high uptime on Immortal Call. Um, you may be wondering wh why is um, Enduring Cry so important? So the line here reads on Enduring Cry. It, it's it's not really about from Enduring Cry like you know it from like other builds um, that utilize the, the the insane regen you will you will be getting for one second, but this time around um, the we are interested in one particular line and that is buff grants two percent additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge and. As, as I said earlier, we are utilizing, or this build utilizes right now, 11 Endurance Charges. So, for 11 Endurance Charges, we are getting 2% additional physical damage reduction. On top of the Endurance Charge itself, which is 4% per Endurance Charge, and from our notable um, Unrelenting, we get an additional 1% additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge, which makes a total amount of 7% additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge. We have 11 endurance charges, that's 77 additional physical damage reduction from endurance charges alone, which brings us almost to the cap of 90%. Uh, if, we, if we check out here the, the chest I'm using, 7% uh, additional physical damage reduction, which brings us to a total amount of 84%. And now, on the Watcher's Eye, we have another 8%, which overcaps us in total. And then, <laughs> that, that wasn't all, <laughs> I'm also using uh, Soul of Tukuhama, which uh, gives additional 3% uh, physical damage reduction, up to 9%, and also additional 1% per, uh, per nearby enemy. This is absolutely overkill, uh, and um, I'm, I'm not I'm not needing all this physical damage reduction. But this is all uh, only a situational, and uh, right now I'm thinking about to drop um, to drop it somewhere, maybe to drop it on the chest, or to drop the Watcher's Eye and get something else instead. Since this character is already at a cap for additional physical damage reduction, armor becomes pretty much meaningless. But it's still nice to have, especially when you're just starting out to ramp, or just in case you're getting hit by a nullifier, which will remove all removable buffs from your character, which includes endurance charges. Uh, let's take a look at the last remaining gem, um, which is Phantasmal Ancestral Protector. And uh, the Phantasmal version gives us 50% increased effect of Ancestor Totem buff. The Ancestor Totem buff is 20% more attack speed while Totem's active. So when you start ramping or you're in the middle of the fight, you place it near you. Um, try not to take it too much damage, then you have to recast it. And it will give you a bunch of extra more attack speed. And um, with the extra juice from the Phantasmal version, it's not 20% more attack speed, it's 30%. 
Now let's have a closer look at the gear of this character. The weapon is uh, one of the highest bases, there are three different kind and for this build it doesn't matter which one. And uh, it, it could be one of the shit bases, the eventuality rod is the best base. And the most important part here is um, that it has a high attack speed, uh, preferably a high crit chance and we want to craft on it um, with multi-mod um, plus two level of socketed support gems so we juice up the enhanced gem the enhanced gem gives us a lot of quality for bone shatter or divergent bone shatter and additionally um, a further the quality craft um, plus seven to eight percent of quality of socketed gems um, the remaining prefix um, doesn't matter too much of course if you got something nice um, uh, this is certainly helpful um, but a weapon like this um, is, is not too crazy to craft here I spammed just attack speed essences until I had uh, hit um, a tier 2 or tier 1 increased attack speed uh, cr a critical strike chance um, then I annulled off um, the other suffix that was in a way and crafted on it um, multi-mod and as a prefix I crafted suffixes cannot be changed and then I um, dropped a veiled chaos orb on it and this removed all prefixes the suffixes stayed the same addition uh, in addition the multi-mod will also stay and I remained with one prefix uh, which I had to be, uh, which I had to unveil. Um, there are not too many mods you can get here. Um, there is a, a, a little bit later. I crafted another one for the, the budget version of, or another version of the build, and um, this here. On this one, I unveiled attacks with this weapon penetrate 16% elemental resistances. You have very, very high chance of um, getting um, either the Ellie pen or the increased fire damage as an unveil. And then you can just um, benchcraft the um, plus two level of Socrates Jabbar gems and the quality craft. If you're still missing those crafts, um, the quality uh, craft is of Haku if you if you go over to the website and you you type in the search um, on the FX mode Haku, um, you will find a bunch of unveiled weapons um, which you want to get. Unveil a couple and you will get the craft. Same for the plus two level of socket support gems. If you're still missing that one, um, look for um, the same thing, but uh, from Katharina. Unveil and craft it. As next, we will be looking at the chest of the character. Here was using or a bot, um, a base with the fractured mod, um, seven additional physical damage reduction, which I now will probably drop um, for something else. Um, for the rest, I spammed um, this this base with essences of insanity um, to gain the onslaught for four seconds when hit. Each time you hit. Uh, with bone shatter you will ins inflict damage onto yourself which counts as a hit so whenever you hit something or get hit something in general um, you get onslaught for four seconds for the rest on the chest um, of course you want um, life and resistances and um, uh, which is what the next thing important here is um, the gain 10% of maximum life as extra maximum energy shield if I drop the chest my energy shield is pretty much non-existent, but if, if I put it on, I gain a, an additional 700, which is just enough um, to keep our divine shield here pretty busy. Um, for the implicits here, um, I went for plus two uh, maximum fire resistance. I could push it, of course, to plus three and purity of fire has increased our effect to get it even higher. Since this character here is uh, utilizing melding of the flesh, um, which makes it so that your highest maximum resistances becomes the highest 
maximum elemental resistance overall um, for everything else. And this, and in this case, um, if we check out the character, um, okay, right now I'm little, missing a little bit of resistance here. Um, if I if I drop a melding of the flash, my cold and lightning resistance drop to 75, and um, with it on, they're all at 86, which is extremely strong. So much for the chest, um, for the helmet here. Uh, this is nothing too crazy. You really want the bone shatter uh, helmet chant. Uh, for the rest, I spammed this helmet here with uh, a mana reservation uh, efficiency um, essences. I forgot the name. I think that was like low thing. Um, yeah, it's a deafening essences of loathing. Um, until I hit something that was usable. Um, for the rest, yeah, I got accuracy, um, resistance, like a little bit of life, and a little bit of armor. As implicit, <clears throat> um, you want the mana reservation. You you don't need like a very high that uh, exceptional. <clears throat> you will later see. Um, that this is uh, not necessary anymore, but you want mana reservation and for the other implicit um, You're pretty much free whatever you want to use What but what you don't want to use is anything that shifts damage like um, Physical damage uh, damage taken as fire or, or anything like that um, I picked here physical damage taken recouped as life which um, for example, I'm, I'm taking 1000 damage and then 10% uh, of that will be uh, regenerated over the next four seconds, in addition to all the life regen I already have anyway. Um, for the boots, um, also nothing too crazy. I bought a pair of boots with uh, a maximum endurance charge implicit, and this is of course uh, synthesized. And nothing too crazy here. Um, I spent this one with uh, Envy Essences for the Chaos Resistance um, until I hit uh, like two, two more resistances. And um, then I crafted uh, Suffixes Cannot Be Changed, um, slandered with the wa uh, Veiled Chaos Orb, and Unveiled Movement Speed, and then crafted uh, Life. Uh, for the uh, Boot Enchant, um, you can pretty much use whatever. Uh, reduced mana cost of skills helps, of course, a little bit with um, the constant damage taken setup, um, which will proc um, pretty much non-stop and um, to pump out the Assassin's Marks here. Then to the gloves, um, they're pretty decent. Uh, I, bought a, I bought a pair here with um, a fractured increased attack speed <clears throat> which is not necessary. Uh, it is nice when you start out ramping, then it is very nice to have um, a little bit extra attack speed. But um, for the majority, is it, it's a, in my opinion, a wasted suffix if you if you don't care too much about the ramping process of the build. Um, here again, um, I crafted uh, with. Envy Essences until I hit um, another suffix. Um, then again, same process. I crafted suffixes cannot be changed and uh, dropped the Veiled Chaos Orb on it. I hit a plus two level of, of socketed AOE gems, um, which, is, which is nice, but not really necessary. What you want here is at least plus one level, which you can easily get off the bench. Um, but I did it anyway, because in the gloves here we have socketed um, Purity of Fire, and even if we had one level lower, we would be at level 23, which is still enough um, to get the uh, um, next breakpoint for Purity of Fire, with, which is level 23, to gain the um, plus 5% additional fire uh, maximum fire resistance. So the crafted mod here with plus one level would suffice. And for the rest, um, yeah, I crafted life. Um, nothing too crazy. Now, the implicits here are um, uh, important, at least one of the implicits. Uh, and this is a strike skills target two additional nearby enemies. 
Um, if you just start as Ballard, I want to want to give it a try. Um, the uh, the plus one additional uh, target will be enough. Of course, if you if you like the build, uh, I would highly recommend to get it uh, to the exquisite state, so you get a plus a two. And um, the fire exposure on hit here um, is. A, a, a simple low level one would suffice or you can uh, crank it up all the way um, you want uh, for these uh, strike skills target two additional nearby enemies um, we also pick um, tribal fury here which gives an additional um, strike skills target one additional so even if you have like the, the, the like more shitty shitty low version and the plus one you will still end up with plus two which starts to feel good uh, plus three or in total plus three um feels really really good <clears throat> now for the rings um when i bought the bases they were like one two x a pop um, for like I level 83 uh, plus and um, right now um, yeah they're they're quite pricey along anywhere from like 5 to 10 X a pop and here I spammed um, int essences to to get a higher intro um, because this character wants in total um, 117 intelligence to be able to wield this weapon um, the next highest thing would be uh, purity of elements which uh, would doesn't even require like 100 int um, same for uh, the increased critical strikes if you drop this for like a fortify or something else um, it would be even ho uh, lower uh, but uh, 170 is required for this uh, for the weapon and for dexterity, dexterity you will need as high as you have your precision. Minus or mine requires 123 um, dexterity. And for uh, strength, uh, you, you're not gonna worry about strength. Um, now to the next ring, same here. I crafted with int essences until I hit anything usable. I already had enough resistances or mostly. And here I got um, accuracy and another dexterity roll um, doesn't matter too much uh, you, you see I'm, I'm like dex and, and over capped um, here um, I went with the with the same crafting route uh, you've like seen me talk about uh, like a little bit here already um, I crafted a suffixes cannot be changed on the ring and then uh, slammed it with a, a veiled chaos orb then I blocked mana so when I go unveil, um, all mana mods will be blocked and there is a very, very high probability and um, that you will be able to unveil life here. And I did this on both rings. And then I crafted non-channeling skills have a minus mana cost. And you really, really want um, a minus mana cost of skills, preferably on both rings. Um, that way, um, your your mana cost for bone shatter uh, will be zero and it costs nothing and you really want it because uh, when this build ramps up it it attacks like crazy and you will would not be able um, to have enough mana to sustain this or um, even worse if you would use like um, um, a life tab that would be w even worse I'm not going into the technicali uh, technicalities here about uh, life tab on losing life, but do not use a life tab with bone shatter. It would be uh, pretty, pretty bad. But what you also could do here, like uh, as an uh, alternative here for a ring, you could actually um, work in um, a calm's way or like a calm sign and on it to, because important is, if you can fix your stats or and, and your resistances in another way, um, you could use um, a comms way here, um, because on the uh, um, here instead of uh, physical damage taken recouped as life, you could easily get um, the implicit that has attacks have like twenty or thirty percent reduced mana cost, which then with one one ring. And this, um, the helmet implicit, 
you could easily get down to 0% or to 0 mana cost of Bone Shatter, which is the most important here. Um, the Ancestral Protector and um, Leap Slam here will not cost anything anyway. Th those are just one links. And for Enduring Cry and Immortal Call, you'll have them linked with Life Tap. Now, for the rest of the gear, there are only two pieces left, which is the belt. Uh, this one I crafted Armor Essences. Uh, which uh, at the point I still needed armor. Um, right now it's uh, wasted. Um, the important stats here on the belt are life, resistances, and cooldown recovery. Uh, cooldown recovery because, uh, as I said like in the beginning, um, we want 100% uptime on Enduring Cry to get the juicy, juicy 77%. Uh, percent additional physical damage reduction and as you can see my cooldown is 7.14 seconds and the duration is 7.3 seconds there there are also uh, other ways of lowering the cooldown of enduring cry um, there is um, a boot implicit um, for example if you don't have one with a uh, boots with enduring cry or you want something else uh not enduring cry um, and endur maximum endurance charge you could get an implicit that reduces uh, the uh, cooldown of um enduring cry um just enough and so you have permanent uptime or in another way um you you can probably uh, find another way or else you just use a belt with increased cooldown recovery here we have uh, like a, a jewel, uh, a simple jewel, like nothing special, like crit multi, a little bit of life, accuracy. And um, for the amulet, um, I'm of course using an Ashes of the Stars um, with a perfect quality roll, which is important here. You could live with a non-perfect um, increased reservation efficiency. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I think it has to be on like roughly like 17-18% uh, reservation. Uh, let me uh, quickly check here. I got 15 here, 18 here. Uh, if I switch it. Yes, it's just enough um, for my level of life. Uh, for reservation anyway, you could drop it like I think by around 5% for mana reservation. Um, but important here is also the life reservation part. And um, because right now with the level of precision, I'm just having barely uh, enough unreserved life. So I'm low life and I'm not um, like capping it here. So seven so ballparks like 17, 18%. Uh, for Ashes of the Stars, or just get a perfect one um, and be done with it. Now let's have a look at the skill tree, um, the cluster jewels, and all the other jewels. Um, we will start this, this thing off with um, the uh, Brutal Restraint here. Um, I'm utilizing a, a second side here. Uh, which could be replaced um, if you get your critical strike chance any higher. I would probably recommend looking into a, a glorious vanity of Doriani, which gives um, additional maximum energy shield um, based on your life. Um, or anything else uh, you want to work in. Then we have like... Uh, just a simple jewel here with corrupting blood on it. Uh, could be something else with life, uh, multi, nothing too crazy. Um, of course, uh, from earlier, the melding of the flash jewel. Um, um, for for uh, As next, we have secrets of suffering from the interrogation jewel here. Um, since this is a fire-based build and it's crit with uh, just enough ramp or enough drama stacks, we'll be having a capped um, Scorch on enemies, which reduces their elemental resistances by 30. For for me, this reads like uh, pretty much like 30% uh, uh, pen, pretty much. Um, of course, Mantra of Flames from earlier, which gives you an additional flat fire damage. Um, per buff on you 
And with all the trauma and all the other buffs, that's a pretty insane amount. An absolute ridiculous amount. So for the Watcher's Eye, right now I have one with um, additional physical damage reduction while affected by determination and crit multi-precision. I did not think about what else I would pick um, if I would would to drop um, the additional physical damage reduction here. But for right now, I'm using this one. And then, of course, we are using a Forbidden Flame and a Forbidden Flash with the um, Blitz Notable here. Um, they are quite pricey. I mean, I paid for them like for both uh, roughly like 30x. I could imagine they go up. We will see what happens. But those are hands down the best jewels you, uh, or best notables you can get. Um, of course, you, you could use like something else. I, I wrote a couple alternatives in uh, the note section in uh, Path of Building. You can check out. Um, but Blitz is hands down the best one you could get. Since it's, it just makes the ramp uh, to a very high um, amount of trauma uh, quite a bit faster. And uh, for the large cluster jewels. Um, here I highly recommend you get one um, that has a graceful executioner. Um, on a suitable spot like here or here um, if you're more of a bud or like a little bit more budget oriented and because graceful executioner is a really good note it gives attack speed accuracy critical strength chance and if you're still lacking it on your gear and um, dexterity and intelligence and this here is the big boy cluster it was like uh, I think 20x it got the or it has the overlord notable here um which lets your melee hits with mace scepter and staves 45 for six seconds flat and as next we have here feet of fury uh, which also gives a bunch of attack speed while leeching and this build has a permanent or has over leech built in pretty much since we will never reach um, our cap here, we are always on low life, and there's just a sliver of life that's unreserved, and the leech was trying to get over there, but it, but it cannot, so it leeches all the time, so we have built in over leech um, with this notable here, 4% um, attack damage leeched as life, and with that we're permanently leeching, and um, that gives us 15% increased attack speed. That's pretty much it. Um, for the skill tree, oh no, we, we forgot this one over here. Uh, just more um, of crit multi and life. You could also like uh, get some jewels here uh, with reservation or re uh, reservation efficiency of skills or something else. And if you wanted to like um, squeeze in in inspired learning, for example, I would probably pick this spot here because we already have devotion, we already have endurance. Um, overcharge is very nice to get and um, faith and steel is also not a bad notable it gives um, increased armor energy shield and a little bit of our resistances and um, I think this would be the perfect spot for the build to squeeze in an inspired learning to to get to get like the, the mini head butter, headhunter bombs going and for the ascendancy which is mandatory in my opinion here is unbreakable and unflinching the rest is debatable but in my opinion or and for this purpose of the build or for what i made it or this is for juicy juicy mapping i want unrelenting 100 percent because it makes it so much easier or with gearing and as next um for me hands down unstoppable is the best a uh, slow effect except for like vines um uh, is yeah it's 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 just too good as notable especially if you run um high delirious maps um it, without it uh, at, at some at some at some cases you feel like you're glued uh glued to the ground you can barely move uh, but this is this notable here um could, uh, would be exchangeable uh, for something else like undeniable or if you like big big aoe's unyielding um would be your pick And now for the skill tree itself. 
Um, this character is level 100, and I do understand if you do not have uh, like level 100 <laughs> Juggernaut and like ready to go. Um, so what would I change? Um, how can you cut in the tree and don't mess or like like cripple cripple the build uh, too much? What I would do is um, at first I would get rid of damage, and later on. Um, just simply get it back. So these three notable uh, notes here th Those those would be um, the the last three notes I would get yeah. uh, As next I would probably drop um, And those those four notes Which brings us already down to level 93 Now um, I would um, just just steal a little bit of life here and uh, travel in the beginning uh, when you're like low 90 uh, just uh, travel uh, this way here uh, it also gives gives a little bit of dex if you have um, this uh, the timeless jewel here so now we are level 91 and this is a range um, most people will be able to achieve and in my opinion um, if you have like a low level character or like low 90 um, character it doesn't make too much sense to run these super juice beyond maps i would probably start it at yeah roughly around level 94 so you where you can really juice it up and in those maps you will get so much xp you will easily get within a day of of like juicing uh, like double triple beyond high daily maps you will be uh, easily level 98 level 99 and this on, on this build you you barely die if your if your gear suffices and your your skill and your knowledge of the build suffices or you you get into it a little bit you will not die on this build as or rarely ever maybe in some shit, shit situations um yeah so this is level 91 if you wanted to level as this build what i do is um as next I would drop this whole section here, enduring, uh, including this one endurance charge. So if you drop everything here, you're looking at a level 80 character, and I think the rest you can figure out by yourself. There's a little bit more life you can steal, and and so on and so on. So yeah, um, that's so much for the skill tree and uh, how I would level it. So. Yeah, this section here is not too important. It is very good, but not too important. Then steal a little bit of hand life here, or, or cut in, uh, cut in here, and and take the shortcut. And for reservation, um, here of course I picked life um, reservation efficiency of skills. Uh, but what I did not pick here is if you're really like like really close on reservation or like on a really tight budget you can pick this notable or this note here and you will get an additional generic increased reservation efficiency of skills which also counts for your life pool uh, for the rest um we want here fortify uh, of course you could he also cut in here and take this increased fortification note but um yeah this is like extra fortify and right now I'm experiment, uh, experimenting with increased fortify duration, which I think I kind of like as well. If you are on a super budget, you could you could pick here melee hits fortify, but it comes with, in my opinion, a very very big downside, um, with minus three maximum fortification. I would rather slot in in your main setup fortify and drop some damage there instead. The, the build has more than enough damage, like 10-20% more or less damage um, doesn't make or break the build. So here, um, usually I would go with plus 3 fortification. Um, or what you could also do is like the increased fortification duration. Uh, we want call to arms um, because, yeah, permanent uptime on Enduring Cry. Um, armor Mastery, um, Determination. A mana reservation um, if you have more than enough reservation you're free to drop this or pick something else um, reduced extra damage from critical strikes could be nice um, but anything else is um, pretty much useless of course we go disemboweling the notable here is the baitable 
Um, you could also pick here um, increased effect of non-damaging elements, but sooner or later your damage will be ramped up so high you, you will achieve a max scorch effect anyway. So this could be dropped or you could um, like uh, go over here and do something else. Um, Divine Shield, as mentioned before, absolutely mandatory for the build. Um, here we have um, just counterweight, one of the best nodes in the game for the most damage, uh, insane critical strike chance and crit multi while wielding a staff. And here we get a, with a get an also a 10% um, chance to get an endurance charge on melee critical strike. And this build is all about critical strikes. And as mastery here, um, increased defenses while wielding a staff, which increases your armor, but also your uh, maximum energy shield. If I were to drop this node here, I lose a bunch of energy shield, which I don't want. So, and we anoint, of course, very, very important here. Um, potency of will. Uh, because increased skill effect duration, which affects um, the duration of our trauma stacks. That's why we also pick here increased skill effect duration and as mastery um, and the additional 10% more skill effect duration. Um, with all this summed up, the duration of my trauma stacks are roughly um, like 16 seconds at the moment. Um, don't forget, here is also um, a increased duration directly linked uh, to Bone Shatter because this is a ramp build and we ramp over time. So if we can extend the time we can ramp, we will of course increase our DPS even further. And let's quickly talk about how this build is played skill-wise. Um, while mapping or doing pretty much anything, I just hold down Q and W um, for just generic mapping, just generic content. Um, yeah, that's that's for those two. Um, Ancestral Protector, I mainly drop when I ramp or when I have like a lot of time. Or like a boss, a boss is doing his anima animation thing. Um, I drop I, an Ancestral uh, Protector here. And um, yeah, for Leap Slam, um, pretty much mobility. And for the rest, I'm just um, hammering down with a Bone Shatter. Um, so I run around um, like like this. I, I just hold those two buttons here. Um, so, so they go off on cooldown. And um, uh, one thing to note here is, um, for example, um, you're playing, you're playing um, the tower map. Uh, you, you go into the boss room and the boss does his like four second animation um, just continue holding down enduring cry but do not press immortal call um, immortal call you press um, uh, briefly before you do your first attack because um, as I just said um, the, the duration of, of this animation thing is roughly four seconds um, for uh, um, Brutus uh, until he is attackable and this is enough time that your divine shield here uh, drops off and there is a high probability if you're just hammering down of like four or five seconds on a boss and you still have a very high trauma stack that you will one shot yourself so um, if the boss if the boss is attackable um, just con con continue pressing and during cry and before your attack, press Immortal Call. And um, th the moment the, the start, uh, the, the fight actually starts, you can just uh, continue like pressing both buttons like usual. And um, for a quick demo demonstration here, um, how, how the ramp dance works, uh, I will showcase this uh, right here. What I would do is, um, whenever the map starts, I try to like uh, lure in like one or two mobs, especially when it's a, when it's a high delirious map. Uh, then I, I will will jump will jump around, uh, maybe press my ancestral protector, jump around, uh, hit the mobs until until I have like like 10, 20, 30 stacks, 
and at the moment you reach like 30 to 50 stacks uh, and this moment you become pretty much un an unkill unkillable uh, machine that's just hammering away everything and uh, can pretty much stand and everything and um, yeah that's that that's the, the the start dance of the build the same thing applies for bosses now uh, when you for example like go into an El uh, uber elder fight or something um don't just stand there and eat damage and wait for a ramp um uh, drop your ancestral protector and uh, try to not to get hit too often jump around avoid damage for the first so a couple seconds and um, get your initial trauma stacks up um, as I said like 30 40 trauma stacks at this point you become pretty much unkillable I have the skill on exactly level 7 because with the ashes of the stars here um, gives another plus one level which brings us up to level eight which is the breakpoint um, for the more damage on the skill tree for from like at level seven I get a two percent more damage per trauma but on level eight I'm getting three percent and we don't want to push it higher because of the self-inflicted physical damage that uh, that a skill gets the more you level it also, um, which is um, very important here, um, as you can see, I corrupted this gem to get to 23% quality. 22 would be enough, um, but 23 is also fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is because with my current setup here, um, this way I get to 100% increased uh, quality of the gem. Um, as you can see, I get 7% from the item, I get 40% uh, quality from the support gem, which is the enhance, and an additional 30% a global modifier, which is from Ashes of the Stars. If you can't get your hands on a um, like 22 or 23% quality um, bone, a divergent bone shatter, um, it's fine. Um, don't worry too much. Uh, this is like like super super maxed or min maxed in that regard at least uh, quality wise um, if you can't get this um, don't worry too much um, then it, it's a four percent increased attack speed per trauma and not five and sooner or later if you like the build you will probably get it and then you will have it maxed out and now to uh sum up the build again it's a melee strike skill build um, that is based on ramping and buffs or at hack speed over time and stacking buffs as much as we can um, to utilize the full potential of mantra of flames so the, la the longer uh, we can attack a single target um, the higher the stacks of our trauma become which lets us attack even faster and um, get even higher of a trauma stack and so on and so on and with that um, massive, am massive amounts of flat fire damage from mantra of flames this all comes uh, with a downside of um, of uh, like flat physical damage we take per trauma when we gain trauma which means we, we take an immense amount of uh, flat physical damage uh, whenever we attack and we attack a ton. Um, we are taking or, or bringing this uh, even to an advantage with the notable unbreakable, which from all the prevented physical damage in the past 10 seconds we will be generating 1.5% of that damage or that physical damage as life, which lets us after a while um, regenerate an insane amount of life per second. I'm talking here like 100 to 150k life a second. Uh, plus, the uh, same goes here for AS, that, that's why we want a little bit of energy shield, like 500 will, will already do it. Um, if you get 
anymore it will be even better because divine shield here does pretty much the same thing um, as unbreakable but instead of over 10 seconds it's over four seconds and it's three percent from the damage regenerate or physical damage regenerated as energy shield which um, brings us a pretty close in terms of regeneration um, from the notable unbreakable so you if you if you're like hammering down a boss for example um, just open your character sheet look under the fences and you will probably see like a 50k or a 100k life regeneration and it's very similar uh, very similar um, numbers for energy shield so this the, all this makes the build um, extremely durable um, almost unkillable and I pretty much never die on this build from from like a, a mob or anything. If even then in the ramping process when I'm when I messed up something or I get overwhelmed by mobs. But usually if I if I die, uh, it's usually because my trauma stack got too high, like 500, 600, something, uh, something stupid. Uh, and I kill myself or I get hit by a nullifier which removes my endurance challenges and I kill myself there or I have a bad timing on a boss um, so uh, if, if the boss is phasing and I still have a very high trauma stack by the time he becomes attackable and I mismanage my immortal call here then it can be uh, that I also one shot myself uh, which is yeah my, my own mistake uh, but you will probably if, if you play this build you will probably learn to manage it or experience it for yourself and with that we've come to the end of the guide i want to briefly mention here that a friend of mine asked me if i could make a super super budget version of um of this build as a berserker which i did and i will include the pub for this in the video description and I made, I made it as budget as I could. It's uh, roughly um, 30 to 40 X. It is not capable of running 100% delirious. It can relatively comfortably run 80% delirious and absolutely easy. It smashes 60% uh, delirious maps uh, with ease. 80 can, can get a little bit rough um, depending on the mods, but yeah, as well as cheap as I could. And maybe you want to make uh, a Berserker or maybe uh, you just want to want to do the, uh, the, the Juggernaut thing. And, and there you can check out the gear, what I did uh, to make it so, so budget. And maybe you, it, gets you, it gets you a couple ideas. Uh, I got for, for the, the main build here um, also a couple ideas and which I already applied. And for the rest, I believe I want to mention here that the build you saw here, or you, you, you can see here, was roughly um, 150, 160 um, X at the time I made it. I already see this as a budget version. This this build has like open end scaling. It's crazy. You can you can drop a couple of mirrors on a build and you would still find something you would want to improve and you can still feel the improvements because the scaling is completely out of control. Yeah. And for the rest, thanks for tuning in and see you in Rayclast.